I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. I normally do a, quote, Dorian-type warm-up or two uh, and one working set to fail, followed by a rest pause before cranking out a couple of more reps to fail or incorporate a couple of drops to go past fail. All right, so it's a lot there. Is it okay dieting down, albeit perhaps a few pounds lighter due to dieting or not overtraining while doing cardio two times a day? Yeah, I I think that if you're – doing this type of a workout and getting good, good, good gains out of it. Let's just, let's, I want to preface that. Some people tell me these crazy workouts and, they, and they're not really making, they don't really have good physiques, you know, or they don't really have a lot of muscle development and meaning they're not really necessarily engaging the muscle. Assuming it's working for you off season, you could absolutely do it pre-contest. You, you know, obviously you're not going to be a strong pre-contest. You might have to lighten the weight a little bit. Um, you might want to throw an extra one or two sets in there if you feel like you're really not able to go to failure because maybe you just don't have the energy or you don't have the the strength to do it. That's fine. But yeah, I was always a low volume guy. So if I do low volume in the off season, I do low volume pre-contest because if I do high volume, I'm going to lose muscle tissue. So do what works for you. Don't change just because you think, oh, I'm dieting now. I got to do high reps. Well, if you didn't do high reps the whole offseason and you didn't respond well to high reps, why would you do them now? You know, I think that's the mistake people make. Stick to what you do. You might have to modify it a little bit because you're pre-contest now, but I wouldn't make major altercations to what you're doing on a regular basis. What do you think about high-frequency training doing the exact same volume you would uh, training once a week, only dividing it in half so you train body part twice a week? I know it's something you're not a fan of, but you probably wouldn't suggest this for guys with faster metabolism like yours. But what about us endomorphic bodybuilders with slower metabolism who are not prone to losing weight easily, but also have trouble putting the weight on without getting fat? Yeah, you know, here's the problem. The body can only recover so fast. And you got to remember when you're training like chest, you're also training your triceps, Okay because you can't get the triceps out of the movement. When you're training shoulders, you're also training your triceps because you're pushing. When you're training back, you're also training your biceps and your forearms. So there is overlap already. Now, if you do each body part twice a week, now you're doing each body part ostensibly three or four times a week, uh, which is usually too much. So if you're training with high intensity, full range of motion, heavy weights, you should not want to train each body part more than once a week. And if you do, you're probably not doing, you're probably not training intensely enough. And that's what I tell people. When I would finish a leg workout, let's say I did legs on, on a Monday or something like that, or something like that. I think I used to do either Sunday or Monday legs. I don't remember. And when I would be done with that workout, I would be so happy that I didn't have to train my legs again for another whole week because I gave it so much. And I felt so nauseous after the workout. And, I, and my legs were so throbbing from the amount of weight that I lifted and, and, and put on my back that I didn't want to do it anymore. I, I wouldn't want to go back to it. Same thing with chest. If I'm inclining 405 on the incline bench for, for six reps, you think I want to go back and do it again in three days? No freaking way. There's no way my body could recover from that. And there's no way your body can recover from that as well. Just because you have a slow metabolism doesn't mean you should be weight training more because weight training doesn't burn fat, okay? Does it raise your metabolism a little bit? Yeah, but it's not, you're not mobilizing fat. When you weight train, you're using carbohydrates as a fuel source. So you're, you know, if you if you want to do cardio, that's fine because you got a slow metabolism, but don't combine the two together. Don't turn your weight training session into some kind of a, a cardio or metabolic fat burning mission, or you're going to accomplish nothing. You're going to build no muscle and you're not going to lose fat. I promise you. Keep them exclusive. Cardio, separate. Weight training, separate. Never the twain shall meet. Is DECA as dangerous? I, I guess uh, certain influencers are going about saying uh, it is dangerous. Your thoughts? I look, I use DECA for years. I think DECA is probably one of the safest drugs out there. 
because it doesn't have as many side effects as, as um, testosterone. Now, in some people who use too much of it, they can have a little bit of an erection issue because it can raise prolactin levels, which is something that the 19 nor testosterone um, compounds can do. Trenbolone can do it to a lesser degree, but it's usually dose related. If you take between 200 milligrams and four or 500 milligrams of Decker per week, you get a great joint anti-inflammatory effect from it. It's a really great anabolic to combine with testosterone for building muscle and preserving muscle tissue. Uh, and it has virtually zero toxicity in terms of like liver breakdown because it's such a long acting compound. For me, I, I, think, I think DECA EQ combined with testosterone, you know, in, in separate mini cycles is probably the best to, to both off season and pre contest drugs you can use. I think it's just, it's safe. They're not toxic. You get nice steady baseline levels of, of the drug in your system where you don't get ups and downs because they're long acting compounds. I don't know why anyone would think it was a bad drug. Like I said, unless you have a real sensitivity to DECA where it just it boosts your, your, your prolactin levels too high and you have erection issues. Aside from those people, I don't know why anyone else would, would say that it's dangerous or that it doesn't work well.